What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about Punisher Warzone. And in today's video I'm very happy to be joined once again by my buddy Cody from the Brock Upside. The dude's got the coolest voice ever. I said it the first time that we collabed and I've said it to him on a million other occasions. So I'm always happy to have him here on the channel. This time around again to talk about Punisher Warzone. Last time we covered the Thomas Jane, the Punisher, and yeah this time around like Cody is going to mention in just a little bit, this is a movie that is kind of a sequel to that film, but in a lot of ways is a reboot. It's very different in terms of its tone, its feel, its vibe, uh, but there are elements that kind of make it feel like a sequel, similar to, as Cody will say, uh, the Hulk and then the Incredible Hulk, or Hulk and Incredible Hulk, where there is a kind of a similarity and it kind of feels like a sequel, but it's not, you know? So yeah, Punisher Warzone. We're going to be hearing from my buddy Cody in just a little bit, but a big thanks to him for being here in this video. You guys can find the link to his his channel down below in the description box go give him some love let him know i sent you we'll be hearing from him in just a little bit but for now let's get into my thoughts on this marvel movie so i remember going to see this in theaters opening night and it was completely and utterly empty this is a Marvel movie that I find people tend to forget about, a movie that tends to not get a whole lot of credit when it comes to just a Marvel movie in and of itself. And if I'm not mistaken, it's one of like two or three films that have come out that say Marvel Knights at the very beginning instead of the traditional Marvel logo that would pop up. So yeah, this time around you have Ray Stevenson in the role of Frank Castle as the Punisher. And this time around, he's already more established as the Punisher. In the other film, The Punisher with Thomas Jane, you know, it's a revenge tale. His family's just been killed and it's him becoming the Punisher, taking on the title of the Punisher. And it isn't until the movie actually is about to wrap up that he says the Punisher or calls himself the Punisher. So in this one, he's already the Punisher. He's already lived as the Punisher. People know who the Punisher is. He already has a reputation with the cops. And yeah, he's already kind of like this phantom that comes in and out and just destroys all these various crime lords and villains all over the place. Now, of course, Frank Castle is a tortured soul. And so we definitely deal with a lot of that in this film. And I think that Ray Stevenson honestly does a really good job. I think he's one of the more forgettable Punishers, and I don't say that because I think he's forgettable, but I do find that a lot of people tend to forget that he was the Punisher. I will say maybe the one with Dolph Lundgren was probably the one that is the most forgettable, but yeah, sometimes I feel like this movie gets a lot more crap than it deserves, and ultimately, quite frankly, I really enjoy this film. I've seen it quite a few times, including a few times in theaters back when it first came out, and ultimately, it's not the greatest film of all time, and I definitely have my criticisms, but I do find this to be, for the most part, a really well-acted, very big, over-the-top, comic booky movie that definitely delivers on the Punisher element of the movie. You know, when you go into a Punisher movie, you want to see badass action, you want to see some sweet visuals, some great gunplay, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and honestly, I think that this film delivers. Now, of course, if you're looking at something like the John Bernthal, Daredevil, Punisher, and that, you know, series of Punisher that would end up coming out on Netflix, it's definitely a lot darker, a little bit more gruesome, a little bit more grounded, and there's some epic action sequences in that version. And the same with the Thomas Jane one. But I would argue that this one definitely has the biggest and the most over the the top action and if you're a fan of big over-the-top gunplay action this film definitely delivers on that and if you're talking about this movie you absolutely have to talk about Dominic West as the villain Jigsaw I love him in this movie and honestly I just kind of feel like he's one of the most underrated comic book movie villains in a movie and that's not to say he's this phenomenally well-written character in a lot of ways he is a bit one note but what I do thoroughly enjoy about his performance is that he leans into the big over-the-top nature of the character and you know if you look at the comic books the character is a very over-the-top comic book character and so he leans into that he's very much just a very cartoony villain and that may work for some and not work for others but for me it definitely works I think he definitely fits the film and the tone very well though there are times where the film feels a little bit more serious than maybe he's playing it off to be there are moments where he's a little bit more goofy and some pretty serious moments but ultimately I do feel like the tone kind of balances out and does have a good balance of some really goofy comic booky element while also having a pretty grounded element to the film as well. This film also stars people like Julie Benz, Wayne Knight, as well as Colin Salmon, and many others. It's also directed by Lexi Alexander, who is not somebody I'm super familiar with. They've done a lot of TV directing, but I do enjoy the direction that they were giving here to the film. I think when it comes to a lot of the lighting, the set design, the costume design, and the locations that are used, I think all that is really solid. I also find the cinematography and just overall just feel and vibe of the film to be really solid. I really enjoy the aesthetic of this film and I think that's part of what really kind of pulls me in every time I watch it However, I do have some negatives and we're gonna get into those in a moment But for now, let's go ahead and hear what Cody from the Brock upside had to say about this one 
Hey Anthony, it's Cody from the Brock Upside here. We're finally going to be talking about Punisher Warzone, the 2008 movie, which is kind of, sort of a sequel to the 2004, but the cast is completely different and tonally and stylistically it's all different. And I, did, I don't think it's really a sequel, it's kind of like a reboot sequel. Incredible Hulk type situation, but you know, whatever. So last year we both collabed on the 2004 Punisher movie with Thomas Jane. And you know, when I first saw that movie, I didn't have the most overwhelmingly positive response to it, but I'll admit that movie actually has grown on me quite a bit since then, and I actually enjoy it a decent amount now, to the point that I might actually go pick up the 4K at some point, because, you know, it's, it's early 2000s comic book fun, which... I'm always down for. To the point where I was actually a bit bummed out that Thomas Jane wasn't going to come back as the Punisher in this movie. Instead, we've got Ray Stevenson taking on the role of Frank Castle slash the Punisher. So he's like this middle child of Punisher adaptations with Thomas Jane over here and John Bernthal over there. And honestly, he does just kind of feel like the middle child of the Punishers because I just don't fully buy him as this character like I do the other two. Maybe it's just a visual thing because he has like this very different Punisher Punisher suit, which is like a bulletproof vest with a very barely visible Punisher logo. Would it have killed them to make the Punisher logo just, you know, a little bit more visible? You douchebags? I'm not trying to say that Ray Stevenson did a bad job as the character, I just think he's the least strong amongst the three Punishers we've gotten so far. But this time around, the movie is a lot more stylized and comic booky, very similar to what we would see eventually in the Netflix shows, which I think is really cool. It's a lot darker, grittier, and way more violent this time around, which is a lot more along the lines of what I would expect from a live-action Punisher movie compared to the first one, where I did mention that one felt just a little too bright in 90s for my taste. This one, I think, definitely captures the essence of a Punisher a little bit more, so on that ground, I think I like that aspect of this movie more than the first one. Not to mention this movie sports a very interesting supporting cast, including the actor who played Walter Steele in Arrow, and also freaking Wayne Knight. That's freaking awesome. Hello, Frank. Hello, Newman. I also just really appreciated some of the smaller, but still badass moments this movie presents. Like the part where the Punisher breaks his nose, so he shoves a pencil up there and just <laughs> fixes it. That's pretty cool! So we've got the Punisher, who fixes things with pencils, and then we've got John Wick, who kills people with pencils. Learning a lot of weird multi-uses for pencils today. And by far my favorite part of the whole movie was the hotel fight sequence towards the end of the movie with lots of creative gunplay and hand-to-hand -hand combat. I thought that was really cool. I'm just a big fan of action sequences that are basically like storm the castle type stuff. Now there were a couple things I definitely took issue with, like the overuse of very fake looking CGI blood splatter and stuff. If you're gonna do blood, do it for real, it looks way better. And also the fact that the main villain Jigsaw, now while the makeup and prosthetics looks wonderfully gory and scary and freaky, I just feel like he's a little too goofy and silly for this movie's darker tone. I feel like he would have fit perfectly within the first movie, but here, it just doesn't really work. It's kind of like bouncing around this one person's house, tearing it apart, like going through their underwear drawers and stuff. It's like... I just don't think that really fits as well, you know, it's not like Batman versus the Joker where he's supposed to be goofy and silly but has a weird twisted sense to it. But actually when it's all said and done, I did have a good time with this movie. Like I mentioned, I do appreciate that it's a bit darker, more stylized, a little bit more violent compared to the first movie. But I think ultimately I do like the 2004 Thomas Jane movie a lot more than this one. But I do appreciate it going for the darker route like this. So now we've gotten three live action Punishers with Thomas Jane, Ray Stevenson, and John Bernthal. What are the odds we're gonna get like Punisher into the Punisher verse at some point? That'd be cool. Probably not gonna happen. Back to you, Anthony. A big thanks to Cody for being here in this video. Loved hearing your thoughts, my friend. And it seems like for the most part, we kind of agree on this. I do agree that Jigsaw is a bit cartoony at times, though I do like it for the most part. But yeah, I loved hearing your thoughts and I, I found it to be uh, pretty similar to mine in a lot of ways, though we have a couple of differences here and there. Ultimately, always love having somebody on and having to hear their thoughts as well. So a big thanks to you for joining me and to anybody who's watching this. If you're not already subscribed to his channel, please, the Brock Upside, link is down below in the description box. Go give him some 
some love. Let them know I sent you. But for now, let's wrap up my thoughts on this movie. I think where this movie really shines 110% is in its action. The action is big. It's over the top. It's bombastic. It's fun to watch. However, at times, you can definitely tell where the budget was allocated. I think when you see certain action sequences and you see things like the makeup done on the character of Jigsaw, you can definitely tell that that's where majority of its budget went to is certain makeup effects and certain action sequences. And then there's other moments where they're using a lot of CGI blood, as Cody mentioned, that kind of takes you out of it. There are moments where the blood feels real and tangible and looks really good. And then there's moments where even though the gunplay is epic and everything that's happening around it is epic, you can't help but kind of have a chuckle at how cheesy and, you know, not real the blood looks, which could lead into the comic booky vibe that they're kind of going with. But sometimes it just looks so fake that it kind of just takes you out of it a little bit. And sometimes the way that certain people's bodies move because they were kind of digitally altered when they were shot just doesn't really feel natural. So those moments always kind of take me out of it and make me feel like the movie is a little bit goofy. But for the most part, as a Punisher film, I think it tells an interesting story for what it is. And mostly it's really has interesting action. And that's really what you come to for a Punisher movie. I think ultimately, if I think about which Punisher movie has the best storyline for me, I would have to give it to the Thomas Jane Punisher. I think for the most part, that movie has a much stronger narrative and definitely has, you know, that great revenge tale that has a lot of resolution by the end of it. Whereas this one, you kind of feel a little disconnected from the Punisher at times. You know, you don't really know who he is as much. They kind of just keep him as this very serious, stoic character. And it's really more about the action. So this film for me is really enjoyable on on the action level and I really enjoy a lot of the performances because there is a very you know over the top element to it you can definitely feel that the cast was having fun being a part of this movie I just think that this movie maybe needed a once over with the script again or something or something to kind of flesh out the story a little bit more because there are a lot of side characters and a lot of people that are part of the main storyline in this movie including people like Julie Benz who I feel just don't really get a whole lot to do narratively and are just kind of there to kind of push the story forward and kind of get us to those action sequences rather than giving us a really well fleshed out narrative I would say that's definitely my biggest criticism in this film and it's definitely what kind of holds it back from being a great movie. I find it to be really entertaining. It's a movie that has a very special place in my heart because I was watching it when I was younger. I remember going to see it in theaters and I have a lot of those memories around it. But yeah, in the world that we live in today, especially in the comic book genre, yeah, it definitely doesn't even hold a candle to a lot of the really well-written films in this genre. So I think without a doubt what holds this movie back from being really strong is its story, is its dialogue, and is its characters. However, what is present I think is fun enough to be an enjoyable watch. So that's going to be my thoughts on this movie. Loved hearing Cody's thoughts and loved having you guys watch. And I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Are you a fan of this movie? Have you seen this movie? Have you not seen this movie? Leave any and all those comments down below. As usual, again, Cody, check out his channel down below in the description box. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.